Oh, hey guys, it's Joe Pickup from SoMuchMonsters.com. We're going to go into the rendering portion of our video series. Uh, there are four pretty simple steps here. Three, really. I added the fourth for flavor. It's great flavor. Anyway, we're going to basically just set up by organizing our model and then preparing to decimate it, then do the decimation. That means reducing the polygon count to a reasonable level. Um, then we will... Uh, export both the low and the high res, so our, our source render model from, from the high res and the low polygon model for the game model. Um, we'll choose a package to render in, in this case we're going to use xnormal, and, and that's really it. And then, then we profit. Profit a lot. So let's jump into it. Alright, so I'm going to start by basically just cleaning up this file. I'm going to get rid of anything that's excessive. I'm going to get rid of my second model. Now, remember, we're just doing this for an export. We're not going to use this as a final, like, basically, we, we want our source, but our current state has a bunch of extra shit in it. So let's delete out the the blanks for uh, the original sculpts and delete. You're welcome to save this file as a decimated Z tool. Um, I'm going to go look at this real quick. I'm going to set everything to all high. Or set all high. It's a but button at the bottom of subtool menu. What that's going to do is make sure that we're at our highest subdivision on each mesh. And then one thing we need to do before we decimate is go down to our layers and we're going to say bake all. Ooh, we got some vertex color that we're going to fill. We're going to just fill that with white. I don't know why I had vertex color. I forget. Um, and then I'm going to go to the other parts and make sure that they don't have any layers. And if they do, we want to bake them. It'll take a long time to compute otherwise. Perfect. And now we're ready to just go up here and hit Z plugin. I'm going to pin that. I'm going to say pre-process all, which is going to go through each model and do what it can to figure out the surface and shape changing on each surface. And we'll just let this go. And when it's done, it'll be ready to be uh, decimated. We can actually crunch it down to a very low polygon count, but have the same quality of surface. So we're ready to do our, our decimation. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just set it to 15%. You can see the number of polygons that'll be there. I'm going to say decimate. I'm going to do one by one, actually. We can do a quick check here. When we say decimate current, should be pretty quick. And there you have, so you can see I'll, I'll before and after here. So this is with decimation. You can see there's some flat planes with some pretty crazy polygons in there. Um, and there's before. So here's before, nice plane. And there's after. Shouldn't look any different when we render. Should look actually pretty, pretty, pretty good. We'll do the same here. Decimate current. So this way we get to retain all the detail and all the nice forms that we'd sculpted in, but we can actually have a very reasonable polygon count to be able to work with. Um, if we needed to bring it into Max or Maya, we'd be able to do that. It's only going to be like 2 million polygons total. And so in this case, I'm actually going to go ahead and now that I've got them all decimated, I'm going to say, um, I've got them all visible, I'm going to say merge visible. And if you had a more complex model with some inlays and maybe some trim and things like that on it, what you can do is actually use the polygroup colors. When you select that mesh, this new mesh that's everything's together in one model piece, um, this will just make it quicker to render. Um, you can see there's, it's hard to see a little bit because of the black in the wireframe, but you see there's a yellow to the base, a light brighter blue here, and a green on the, the handguard. Um, we, we'll be able to render out a uh, vertex color map if we wanted to. That would tell it 
um, or polygroup map that would tell it where our separations of elements are. So we could quick select um, all the trim or all the rivets and have that as a layer that we can quickly select and change the colors and values for. But I'm going to export this out as an OBJ. Um, and we're going to go ahead and make a new folder on the desktop for our working folder. I'm going to call it Swordman. Wait, not Swordman. Why? Swordman? Come on, Joe. Uh, sword. Sounds good. And then here, I'm going to sort this out a little bit so we know. I'm going to over high poly here. And this is high mesh. Take one second to export. Just being being efficient with how you break these things down is going to help you get in and out of Max and or through the render process fast. Go into Max. We'll grab our our sword. We're going to make sure that we have one polygon group or a poly group or smooth group over the whole thing. All right. And we'll export an FBX of this one, just at default settings. Um, we'll export selected, because I do have some other stuff in this file. Export selected. And I will go to the sword folder, low poly. This is going to help you later if you name these correctly. Um, when you want to go back and re-render something or something similar to that, you can export over the top of it and have everything set up correctly. Uh, I'm now going to open up XNormal. We're going to render an X normal. You can do some Googling on that to find it. Santiago Orgaz. Anyway, so we're going to set this up real quick. The render should be really straightforward. And we're only going to get two maps from this. We're going to get our high high definition um, normal map, and we're going to get a ambient occlusion. So we'll go up to our first tab here, the high definition meshes. Right click and say add meshes. And once again, go up to our desktop. Uh, sword, high poly, high mesh, .lbj. Um, we'll leave it at default for now. The things that you're going to want to change are going to be in the low definition mesh. Um, keep in mind that you can actually use multiple objects. If you wanted to export each one as a separate piece, so the blade, the hilt, and the handle all separately, you can add all of them and just hit the checkbox to, to, uh, make them active to render. Um, now we'll go to our low res low definition and say add meshes. Go up one level to our low poly, low mesh dot fbx. Um, we'll leave these at default, but I'll tell you what they are. Max frontal distance, ray distance is how far outside of the model it goes. Uh, max rear distance is how far into the model. So if you think of, um, say, 0.5 is this far out of the model, there's 0.5 in and out from there. So it'll look th for things below the surface of your low poly and above. We'll leave these at default, like I said. Um, we're also going to tell it to use exported normals, um, which means with an FBX, that definitely gives you all of the data you need to render in um, with the correct tangent space. And the rest of those are going to be fine. We may need to pop the frontal and um, rear distance, but we'll just see what they look like at default. Um, then we'll go to our baking options. We're going to say up here there's this little ellipsis. We'll click that. And we will go up to the sword folder, and I'm going to make a new folder called Render Textures. And I'm going to say sword. And this is basically giving it the base name of the file. So sword.tj would be the base, but once we check one of these, it'll say sword underscore normals, sword underscore occlusion. So we're going to turn on those two, and we can just leave their settings as default. Um, should you need to change the green, green channel, you could set that to Y negative if you needed to. You can also tell it to be world or tangent space by this checkbox and what background color. Um, we'll just leave those at default, like I said. And with the occlusion, there's definitely ways to mess with this and make a, uh, get a different quality result from it. But for what we're doing right now, we actually are going to barely use this occlusion anyway. So that's going to be it. Um, we do want to set our resolution. So let's do a quick blast of a 256 by 512 to test it out. We'll turn off our occlusion so it's just a quick normal render. I'm going to open Photoshop while this is doing that. So it should be a quick render. Uh, we want to make sure that nothing is missing. If you see ray misses, it'll be black um, where it's missed. So let's take a look. 
and it should be, like I said, pretty quick for this particular purpose. And here is our, our render. I'll open up the folder so you can quickly grab it. Sword render textures. And there it is. So that looks pretty good. It doesn't look like it missed anything. Let's just open it up and check. Yeah, that looks pretty consistent. So I'm going to go ahead and make a big render. Um, I render large so that I can scale down and, and have some nice quality texture. Oh, 1024 by 2048. Remember, we're doing a rectangular texture, so we want the, the horizontal, which is the first setting, um, larger than the vertical, or smaller than the vertical. And so edge padding is basically the amount of distance from where the edge of the UVs is. Oops. So from the edge of the UV group out, you'll see this this stretching. That's edge padding. Um, the higher resolution the model is, the, the higher that should be. So let's just go ahead and render that and in the inclusion. I'm going to fast forward through it so we'll get a quick render. The inclusion is going to take a little while in in top or in X normal. So let's just give it a shot. So now we've got them both rendered out. Let's take a peek. Photoshop. Close that guy up. Sort of normal, sort of occlusion. Both look great. I'm going to do a quick little trick here to set this up. I'm gonna I'm gonna set it up. I'm gonna load it into Marmoset so we can take a look at it in 3D. Um, I'm gonna copy my my uh, normal map, open up Crazy Bump, and paste my normal map in from clipboard. And I'm gonna just grab my diffuse texture from here. You'll see it's kind of like a cavity map. It'll be nice and clean. Uh, we'll take this, do a little, a couple quick little things here. Um, view. We want to get our layers. Great, Cal. Congratulations, you're in a video. Um, I'm going to put a curves. Bring this down so we have below the 50% margin on our base level of this. Um, I'm going to paste in that cavity map and just put that in as an overlay. Um, I'm also going to do a quick levels on this, get it a little bit darker overall. And we'll just leave that at that for now. This is obviously, this is totally nonsense. It's not actually um, a final, but now I will save a sword diffuse 24 bit per pixel and I will also save a sword normals also 24 bits and just go right into Marmoset so real quickly I don't know if you can actually see, I'm not sure if this is framed correctly but open a mesh um, we have that sword folder. We saved an FBX for our render model. That should be fine. So low poly, low mesh. He looks good. Since it's an FBX, it saves all of our, our smoothing groups in there. So everything should be smooth correctly in here. And I will go to my material panel, change my diffuse to sword diffuse. That looks good. And I will change my normals to sword normals. And real quickly, change my light to say pavement or something like this that looks fine you can see the normal working there's no really bad errors so at a base level we got a lot of nice detail from that high res now this texture is pretty high resolution right now 1024 by 2048 is insane um, I'll definitely shrink it down uh, when I save out my source for the game once we do textures but let's turn on our spec a little bit you say use specularity well tweak these values since we don't have a spec map yet. Make it a little bit more metallic looking. But there you go, that's you know base level. Got our render out, got our model showing up in a 3D viewport, and you can see that nice roll off on the specularity as I roll the light around the blade. That's what we're looking for. So that's it for now. Um, we will continue with texturing in the next video. And then from there, uh, we'll split off into, I'll, I'll export this out into a few different games and we'll have a video for each. But 
This has been Joe Pickup from SoMuchMonsters.com. Thanks for watching.